Good morning, afternoon, or night, depending on what time you are watching this. This is Melanin Mindset, a show that looks at mental health issues within the Black community. And today I'm joined with another guest. Guest, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Uh, Javon Reed, aka Six Packs of Reed, uh, on my fitness Instagram account. Okay. Um, Javon, we're here to talk about your, as you call it, your calisthenics journey. When did, when did this journey start? Uh, for me, it started in the first lockdown, March 23rd, 2020. Um, it was just, I wanted to try something new. Obviously we all went into lockdown together. Um, for, and for me, I know I'm like, I can be quite lazy if I'm not motivated. So I wanted something to do that will keep me inspired, keep my mind sharp, but also keep my body fresh throughout that lockdown, that first lockdown. So I just started looking into calisthenics and um, I'd known about it a, li a little bit, but um, I decided to do some research a bit more in depth and then decided to also like YouTube, like most most famous calisthenics athletes. So my point of reference uh, is Austin Dunham. He's from uh, America, lives in Florida and also Abnormal Beans, he's from the UK. And those two were my two point of references for started my calisthenics journey and then they just got me hooked watching their youtube videos seeing some of the stuff they're doing basically just looking like two black captain americas um they were just crazy super strong hench and it wasn't just like a typical weight building kind of like regime it was very much a lot of body weight um kind of like exercises that they they learned themselves and it's progressive over time and I think just seeing the results over time is what kind of drew me into calisthenics. So yeah, that's how I kind of started. I just have to thank that first lockdown. In hindsight, it was kind of a, a good thing for me long term, really. Cool. So like you said, like that was your, your motivation, seeing them. Was it more seeing their physique or was it more seeing what they were capable of doing? Uh, for me, it was, it was a mixture of both, but to be honest, it was more seeing the, cap the capabilities of what they could do, really. And it's just, it's mind-boggling. Um, when you first see it, you're like, you probably think, I won't be able to ever do that. Um, but the way they broke it down from broke it down for all beginners, really, and when you get to a place of where you can achieve and do certain drills and certain like forms, it's, it's, it's really like gratifying I don't know if that's the right word for it but you it's, it's a huge sense of achievement when you're able to do a handstand or a planche or a tuck planche or tuck press like do some of these stuff and you know you're a novice and after time and putting effort and working and being able to do it so yeah for me it was more the capabilities of what they could do it looked cool it looked sick and it just looked like some superhero kind because of, some kind of superhero kind of thing really so it was um yeah, that was the, one of the main reasons for me. That was a draw for me, really, if I'm honest. Mm. Uh, so break it down then. For somebody who has no idea what kind of aesthetics is, you know, how it works, what is it like for a beginner or, or somebody like, what is, what is it? So the best way I can explain it is like mastering your own body weight. That's the best way I can explain it. Um, it's being able to balance uh, awkward angles, uh, being able to rely on your core strength and being able to do certain holds on bars, uh, gymnastic rings, whatever is your, your, your calisthenic goal. The calisthenics is like really unlocking your body weight, unlocking that strength in your body, strength that you probably did not even know that you had. Um, and being able to just pull off some crazy, crazy forms, some crazy holds. So calisthenics really in a nutshell, as I see it, and in my personal view, is mastering your body weight. And the best way I can word it is, you know, you know me, I watch a lot of comics, I, I love my anime and whatnot. And obviously we know about Dragon Ball Z. It's literally just like being like a Dragon Ball Z character, training, 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 until they get to the point of where you're like, yeah, I'm level, level one Super Saiyan now. I'm going to level two. So that's kind of the way that I would explain it, really. Mastering your body weight. Okay, and how often do you do it? Um, when I first started, it was literally every day, uh, seven days a week. I was relentless. 
every single day I was training, I was practicing, I was getting impatient, but I kept going, I kept going. Um, in recent times, since things have eased and then obviously, you know, work has been back into life and like family life, I probably will practice three times a week, but I mix that in with body weight fitness and then some weighted calisthenics as well, um, just to make sure my strength is still there. But also at the same time, my muscle memory is still there. So I make sure I train a lot of weighted calisthenics uh, more so than actual practicing on the bars because I feel like the muscle memory is still there. It's just also maintaining that strength. So I never lose that strength. Mm. As you mentioned that, we're just going to, um, for those that's watching, I'm just going to share the screen and show a little clip of uh, you doing some calisthenics. I believe this is in your garden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just going to show this clip real quick. At that point, I'm thinking, yo, should I just let it drop? That is impressive. A lot of it is to also do with your breathing as well. Um, maintaining that slow, shallow breaths. So, Somebody watching that, mm. you make it look easy. So for somebody watching that, how long did it take you to get to, to be able to do that? Or was it like, have you always been halfway there already? Or was it something that took you know, a long period of time? You mentioned you've been doing this for less of a year now. So mm. how long did it take you to get to that level that we've just seen? Um, that probably took me six months. And that's that six months of serious dedication. Like I said, the lockdown helped. Um, so being able to just practice, practice daily. Um, being able to do those holds probably did take a good six months and being able to maintain that strength and gain that strength. So six months it took me in total to achieve that level of strength to be able to hold myself um, and be able to do those certain types of like forms. So yeah. I'd say six months, yeah. So I felt confident as well because there's a lot of dropping on my face, dropping on my butt. Mm. Uh, yeah, that, a lot of that I probably don't post. There's a few I've posted, um, but yeah, it's a lot of dropping and a lot of um, mistakes and impatience. <laughs> All right, so a lot of people, obviously during lockdown, people found many different ways to keep themselves motivated, keep themselves entertained, and keep themselves, uh, um, you know, for their mental stability. It looks like you found calisthenics. What does it do for you mentally? Uh, mentally, it just kind of just like releases any stress that I've had. Maybe if, if that's from work or everyday life, I feel like when I'm on the bars, I'm not really thinking about anything else other than what I'm performing, what I'm doing. Um, you know, I'm just so in the zone. I don't really think about anything else really other than you know, trying something new, trying something crazy, mm. um, trying to unlock an, another new form of strength. Um, yeah, so I don't really, for me, it just helps my, ment my mental health a big, big way. And it's also just helped me to be more motivated with my fitness journey, more motivated to go to the gym, or even if it's just working out at home by myself, um, I'm more motivated to do that, really. So... Mm. Yeah, it, it does my mental health wonders, wonders. Um, mm. You know, it's a big part of my routine weekly, really. So you say it's become a it's become a lifestyle thing for you, then? A hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, 100%. I'm always YouTubing, looking at like the goats of calisthenics, or I'm looking at new upcoming people. I get messages from like young kids, or even like older people, like older than like even say us that are getting into calisthenics. So calisthenics doesn't discriminate, age doesn't discriminate. You know, I've seen some people that are like in their 50s getting involved and doing some amazing stuff. I see younger, you know, um, gender wise as well. I see some amazing female athletes that are like super, super women, like they're just killing it. So, you know, it's, 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 motiv it's, it's inspiring to see those athletes and also learn from them, whether they're at the beginning of their journey, the intermediate part or at the, 
or if they're at that advanced level as well. In, in that clip that we've seen, you were using sort of bars to balance on and to do your workouts. Now, I've done a little bit of research on calisthenics, obviously not as much as you, but uh, my understanding, I was watching um, a guy that tried to do uh, a Mike Tyson workout routine. I think he yeah. tried it for like three days or something like that. And um, he, when he was doing press-ups, he didn't say press-ups. He was saying, okay, I start in the morning with calisthenics. And he would do press ups and squats. So would that be, would that fall into the category? And you know, for somebody that's watching and says, "I want to start," but they don't have any form of equipment or anything to balance on, can that be a start for them? Can it just be as many press ups as you can do, or squats, or do they need to have some form of equipment to balance on? No, you can start. So your your base, your base, like it's, it's in the beginning. It's about developing and increasing your base strength. So start off with like squats, like you said, press-ups, like you say, build that strength up. A lot of, with, with calisthenics, a lot of it is, you know, like I said before, mastering your body weight. So you need to get stronger in your overall, overall body. So especially your core as well. Your core is so important. So, you know, body weight squats are a good start, body weight press-ups, different variations of press-ups that work, your biceps, your shoulders, your chest, you know, your back, you know. Um, different sit sit ups different kind of squats that work your legs because it's all it's all linked together so i would say the basis is obviously start with like body weight exercises and then slowly build yourself up slowly just start to progress um and if you can get little small pyrolets you can get pyrolets about these size wooden pyrolets on amazon about 20 pounds max but explain what a pyrolet is for those that don't know uh, so a pyrolet is like um so the clip you showed before, that is a larger size pyrolet. So you got smaller size pyrolets that you know, obviously, like calisthenic athletes use to obviously use obviously to do all their like tricks and all their performances on and all their like you know forms on. So pyrolets is literally just a bar that helps you hold up your body weight and then perform all the kind of forms and like techniques that you want to do. So you can get small ones. Like you get wooden ones, you get metal ones, um, different shapes and sizes. Companies that I would recommend are like Gravity Fitness. Um, I've bought about four or five of their equipment and it's amazing to use their stuff. Um, Amazon, you can get some stuff on Amazon. But Gravity Fitness is one that I'll um, highly recommend to any viewer that wants to start getting into calisthenics, but most importantly wants to start using a uh, variation of bars or pyrolets. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna ask a question that you may feel uncomfortable answering. Right? Hmm. Gonna ask, I'm gonna answer anyway because I don't care. <laughs> right. So, what if somebody's watching this? They see you. They see your Instagram page. They see the hmm. topless pics. They see the muscles. They see the flexing, and hmm. they say, "Man's just doing this for the gander. This, this, hmm. this, this, this ain't no journey. Man's just doing this for the woman." Like, what do you say to that? Is that true? Is there any truth to that? No, it's just my own journey. And I think, obviously, I'm aware, I'm not stupid. I'm aware that it may attract, um, like, you know, women might find that attractive. But if you see my first post, you know, this is just a journey for myself. It's a documentation for myself and for my own personal growth. It isn't about, you know, having, you know, women come message me or say, oh, that's all it's about. I don't really care about that, you know. It's a bonus. If it happens, it's a bonus. <laughs> I can lie to you. But first and foremost, for me, my main thing is my own personal growth, mentally and physically, you know. And I've seen growth. And for me, the, the shocking thing is, is to see how much people have decided to follow my journey mm. and the amount of people that I've get, get who message me worldwide, mm. you know, that I've watched my growth from the beginning to where I am now. You know, and it's just that's what makes me feel like, yeah, this is what I started. This is why I started. So, yeah, you know, I, I can understand it. People might perceive it that way. And cool, you know, if you do, if you do, that's up to you. I can't change that narrative. But I know for me, it's for my own personal growth and growth. And I'm seeing that personal growth daily. So, um, mm. yeah, it is what it is, man. I mean, you just you just mentioned that you said you get a lot of messages. Mm. 
uh, you know, what to- what sort of messages are we talking about here? So, like, advice, so I get some, like, people that, even if they're just starting out a fitness journey, because I don't just post calisthenics, I do bodyweight fitness, sometimes I'll do, like, a gym workout that was more tailored to lockdown and helping people with lockdown. Um, so I always get questions about, you know, where's the best way to start with calisthenics? What's the best fitness journey for muscle mass? How, how you know, uh, how to get lean? Um, how to work on this, that, the other. And I always tell people, I'm not a personal trainer, you know. I've got some background in sport, but this is just my journey, really. And I can only give people what I research myself and what I've learned and what works for me, what doesn't work for me. Genetics comes into it. I've been blessed in that sense that my, most of my family, they're all quite athletic. So I've always been honest with people that genetics plays a part with your fitness journey as well. So those are the type of questions I get really um, daily, other than the occasional spam of like these accounts trying to get you to be a brand ambassador and try and get you to pay for their stuff and all that kind of stuff, but yeah. Okay, okay. So um, when, you know, you mentioned that you get messages from people all the time. Mm-hmm. Do you, I mean, when you were starting out, was there anybody that you reached out to that you spoke to via message or in person that you seek the advice from, or was it just watching the YouTube video? Uh, initially, just watching YouTube video. Then uh, I did message Austin Dunham. He actually replied, which I was shocked because this guy's got over like 200k followers. And um, he gave me some tips. He invited me on his like calisthenics beginner course at the time. Mm-hmm to um, be part of like a subgroup and, you know, he will document the journey and give us advice and like work with us through the steps. Um, so yeah, he replied. And then most of it was just obviously watched on YouTube. And then when I gained a bit more confidence, uh, I went to a place in Bristol, um, Brandon Hill Park, it was like calisthenics park. And there's some real like calisthenics heads up there and they're like, you know, they're like God level. Um, so I went up there to like get some advice, watch what they were doing, um, and just watch. Um, I'm I'm quite a reserved person, so I tend to just watch and try and pick up, you know, little tips and little tricks that will potentially benefit me. And have you ever considered? You said you know you always tell people you're not a personal trainer. I mean, yeah. I've I've been to the gym with you. We've done a circuit, and you know, one of the personal trainers at the gym. I don't know if you remember this, but she came over. I personally think she was just trying to use any excuse to chat to you, but she came over and was just like, um, you need to let us know if you're, you know, are you a personal trainer? Are you are you getting paid to train these people? And funny enough, you came, I invited you to the gym that day mm-hmm. and we were running circuits, you know, with my, you know, my brother and some other friends of ours. Um, but she just looked at you and she didn't look at me, she didn't look at anyone else. She instantly mm-hmm. thought that you were a personal trainer for, for the rest of us. Mm-hmm. So is that something you ever considered? It is, it is something I've considered. Um, obviously it's an extra source of income, but I'm so not like, I'm, I'm such a not disorganized person, but I can't have multiple projects on. I'm just, I can't function like that. Mm. Uh, I like to have a stress-free life. So I kind of don't want to have my fingers in so many different like pots mm. and you know I need to just have a focus on one thing so that's work family you know calisthenics friends whatever you know it can't be I can't have too many things going I might it might change mm. um but who knows as of right now I don't think I'm re- really willing to go do a personal trainer course mm. and then what? to be a personal trainer what if you had like one person that said all right can I can you be my mentor like just one person and you said, mm. All right, I'm gonna have this person because they've come and asked me, but I'm not gonna take anyone else. Would you ever consider that? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. I would. Um yeah, definitely. I think I would um consider it to, you know, help them as much as I can. Um and also just be honest with them. Just tell them I'm not a you know professional trainer. I'm not professional mm. at this, but you know, I've got some insight, some experience. So yeah, I definitely would, hundred percent. Obviously, when I look at calisthenics, right, I tell you what, the first time I ever saw it was um, YouTube videos like yourself, 
but I saw uh, these guys called, I think they were like bartenders or bartending, mm. I think it was. And this is years ago. And these guys were huge. Like these guys were super built, but they were really ripped as well. Yeah, so yeah. They weren't yeah. just big, they were like super cut. And I remember the stuff they were doing and it just looked insane because it looked so effortless. Mm -hmm. um, but when I looked at them, I thought these guys were bodybuilders that are able to just do this extra balancing stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but obviously it's, it's deeper than that because they have to train for that particular thing. It's not just lifting weights, you know, it's mm -hmm. a particular type of, like you said, body weight training. Yeah, so um, all that being said, how much does diet play a part in this? A uh, major part. I don't really, like I said, genetics plays a part because you know me, I don't really have like a strict diet, but I eat good. So I do eat a lot of veg anyway. Um, I love pasta. Uh, I'm not really like a, a meathead, even though like we come from that like, Jamaican background and we're used to meat and all that yard food. For me, I left home at 18. So that was more restrictive for me. I didn't decide to cook yard food because, you know, amount of salt intake so I've always had an awareness of obviously the amount of you know salt sugars that's in like our food mm. so most foods that I cook nowadays just has a lot of like like prawns fish pasta some forms of veg and then now and again I like to indulge and I'll have like some yard food or I'll have I'll go make some like a chicken biryani or something but mm. day to day weekly for me most of it consists of like spiced up veggies and like rice and like fish and prawns. Um, so diet plays a part, but I wouldn't say quote me because if I'm hungry and I want a Chinese, I'm gonna go buy a Chinese. Mm. If I want to go buy a pizza, I'm gonna go get a Domino's. So, and that can be on a Monday, beginning of the week, and that can be end of the week. Depends how I feel. Mm. So diet plays a part and you have to know your body. I know my body, I know that I can get away with eating junk food because I got a high metabolism, so I burn it off. Mm. If you're someone that doesn't have a high metabolism, you need to probably alter um, how much takeaway you might have in the week. I'm not saying starve yourself, but maybe just restrict how much you have in a week or in a month or in a fortnight, whatever you decide is best for you. But, mm. you know, obviously nutrition, protein, carbohydrates, all that stuff it plays a part. So, you know, you can't be working out your body and then fueling it with non-sequential foods otherwise you're not going to see any uh, progress so you know make sure you've got the basic fundamentals of your diet in hand and you know you're eating right as possible but yeah so yeah that does play a part but i wouldn't say you know go on like a crazy vegan diet or like a you know plant-based diet or just you know water-based diet it's not healthy i personally don't think you just have to alter it you know too much of anything is not good so have a bit of um veg meat whatever you, you whatever's your fancy okay so now as i mentioned these guys were like really big when i see mm. them but they were really cut as well and most people that i've seen that do calisthenics yourself included they've all grown in muscle mass right mm. that's been apparent you can physically see that so are there any fat burning elements to calisthenics if somebody wants to lose weight um can they do that fire via uh, calisthenic or would they only just bulk up no you can i think you a lot of for me the, the basis of calisthenics is how strong your core is so you know if you can develop your core and obviously your core is obviously in you know your abdomen section so if you're you're working a lot and depending on where, you know, you want to lose weight, but most people is obviously around their stomach. So if you're working a lot on your abdomen, abs, you know, and trying to build up that strength for calisthenics, you will see results, you know, you might not see it immediately, but you will. And yes, you do build muscle mass and obviously muscle is heavier than fat. So, you know, you might notice your arms are a bit more bigger before you notice that your belly is a bit more shredded, but you will lose weight, you know, you, you are going to lose that weight. And you also have to mix in and do some different types of workouts. So if you're someone that you are trying to lose weight in your stomach or your hips, wherever, building some skipping into your training, your calisthenics training as well. Skipping is a wicked fat burner and especially it's wicked for cardio. Um, even doing some more cardio, like jogging, you know, sprints, 
build that into your calisthenics. Create like a hybrid program for yourself that's tailored to you. So that's what I would say, like calisthenics can benefit you with your fitness goal, but at the same time, I would also say, don't discriminate using other fitness, you know, exercises, you know, don't discriminate by using the gym, getting on a treadmill or going for a jog or skipping, you know, or using a rowing machine, you know, mix and match. And that's what I do. I mix and match with certain workouts that work for me. Mm, brilliant. I'm going to bring it to a, to a close now. I'm going to ask you about self-esteem. Mm. Right now, I've known you for a number of years and I've never known you to be uh, out of shape, if I, if I want to use that phrase. Um, you've always been someone that has been in good shape. And as you mentioned about genetics, and you've always been someone that was athletic or, or done mm -hmm. some form of sports. But have you ever in your, in your life felt any sort of low self-esteem um, in which what possibly led you to do kind of aesthetics at all? Oh, 100%. You know me. I've had two major knee surgeries. My right knee, I tore my ACL, my left knee. I tore my ACL and my MCL. And during both those times, I lost so much weight. My legs were so weak. Um, I felt like a shadow of myself. I just felt like, you know, I didn't feel like I could probably potentially walk again, let alone run again and play sports again. So that for me was the lowest point that I felt self-esteem wise, you know? And then the amount of weight I lost over that time was crazy. And I think I always think, or that's always in the back of my mind to never really feel that way again. Yeah. But also make sure that my body is always, you know, in prime condition, but just always strong. I don't want my body to, to look or feel like that again. So that's kind of one of my hidden motivations. Because I know the pain of having to do rehab for basically the best part of two years straight. I know what that's like. I know what that's like mentally and how it affects, like how it affected my mental health. So, you know, I have got that motivation in the back of my mind always when I am doing my calisthenics or my, my gym workouts or my bodyweight workouts. That's always in the back of my mind. And I kind of think that's what drives me to try and continue to be better. And sometimes... I don't get to work out all the time, but I always make sure I work out at least three times a week. Mm. You know, and whether that's at home and I'm doing calisthenic practices, because that counts, because I kid you not, 50 minutes of calisthenics is probably more than what some people will achieve in a gym session. Um, or I'll do a bodyweight workout or some kind of skipping. So yeah, that's the motivation for me, never to feel like that again and, you know, have that kind of like, low self-esteem and feeling that weak again so yeah that's that's my like hidden motivation brilliant so final question then for somebody that is once again watching this thinking about it possibly considering it what mm. are the key benefits mentally not not physically because we've, we've covered that mm. but what are the key benefits mentally that somebody could get if you were to give somebody advice uh, what would that be Mentally, it's just, if you doc, especially if you document your journey, mentally, it's seeing how you've overcome. And I think with calisthenics, you continually overcome, um, you know, like each wall. So, you know, if you're consistent, if you're willing to work hard, you know, when you're seeing yourself unlock a, a planche hole, being able to do a handstand, mentally, that's like, that's a big thing because that's an achievement. You know, no one can take that away from you. No one can say, boom, um, you know, you didn't do it. And especially if you've recorded it, you see it and you've, you've had to document each step and you know mentally how hard it is, like when you're failing and failing and then when you just, boom, unlock it, that's, that's a whole love, another level of achievement. And so for me, my calisthenic achievements mentally is probably been the best achievements that I personally achieve for myself. So, um, you know, just overcoming. That's what I believe calisthenics is. Overcoming and having that fulfillment, you know, that you've been able to reach a level that you probably wouldn't have thought you would have reached a year ago, you know? I had no clue that I could still, I could be able to do a handstand a year ago. Mm. No way. So, and now I'm able to do a handstand and do like a front lever. And that's just come from 
busting my ass off really, but mentally overcoming each time because it's been a journey and I've had to fail over and over and over again. So yeah, that's been, that's the men, that's like the mental benefit of doing calisthenics, I would say. It's crazy. You know what, as you say that, right, it brings me back to when I was about five, maybe six, around that age. Mm. And I used to always try to do a headstand on the wall, right? And, and a handstand on the wall as well. Mm. And I remember the first time being able to do a headstand without the wall, just going and just do it, you know, just doing it. Mm. And I remember just being like so excited. I had this determination to do it. I was just a little kid. Mm. But I just had this crazy determination. I remember running down like downstairs to my mom and saying, mom, look, I could do this now. And she didn't really care that much. But I, I just remember for me, how I felt like, and I was only, like I said, I was about five or maybe six or you know, six years old. Um, and I was just doing that at home, not realizing, you know, any exercise, like the fact that it's an exercise or, mm. you know, the fitness benefits of it. But I was really into sort of gymnastics when I was really young, you know, being able to do a forward roll, backwards roll, headstand, handstand, cartwheel, and things like that. And even now, like, I remember like going to jujitsu three years back and some day doing those things that like you have to do those things. You have to do a forward roll, a backward roll. You have to do a cartwheel. And I'm like, this is crazy. Cause I could, I could still do it. Right. Yeah. But as an adult, it's so much harder. <laughs> like, yeah. the fits, like, like the joints, the way your, your joints are feeling the next day. And I'm like, yeah, I'm in a lot of pain just from doing rolling. Consistent stress. Yeah. It's consistent stress on your joints. Yeah. Yeah. So I understand where you're coming from when you say like the feeling of achievement, because like even doing cartwheels and people say, like, "Oh, how can you do that? How do you do that? Like, how do you?" I can't do a cartwheel. And I'm like, the technique. I've never forgot how to do the technique to do it. Yeah, yeah. You know? exactly. Muscle memory, muscle memory. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. Cool. So, is there anything next for you? Is there anything that you've got planned next? As in, do you plan to have like a? Do you have a YouTube channel at all? I do, but I don't really post on it as much. Um, I'm trying to obviously build up that. Um, like, I don't know like, if audience is the right word. But, mm. um, I'm trying to focus more on my Instagram, mm -hmm. trying to do more consistent content. Because obviously, like, you know, with life and getting back into normal work, I haven't been able to post consistently with workouts and, like, um, calisthenic videos. Mm. So I want to build that up first. I might start dabbling in YouTube a bit more. But I also need to educate myself on YouTube a bit more as well. So I think that's I think, very should, I think you should. I think you should have a YouTube channel. No, I have one. YouTube it's just YouTube like, I, it's just posting the stuff consistently. Um, yeah. And I, I just need some education on it. So obviously, when you have time, just hit me up in it. <laughs> that's that's your bag. That's your bag. <laughs> no, that's not my bag. Yeah. <laughs> so do you? Um, is there still any particular moves? Um, that you're still trying to master, or have you have you done it all? Are you elite? No, no, no. I got I got bit to do. So, you know, some of it might sound alien to people, but I say it anyway. So, I want to master like a front planche, and that's literally when you lean all the way forward and you're straight. And I want to master that. And you're, like my forearms have to be like straight on the bars. Uh, I want to master. Obviously, I know I have to do handstands now. I want to master turning around while doing a handstand on the bars. Right. Um, I want to master master muscle ups. Uh, I can do a muscle up, but not consistently well. So I want to master doing that. What's, what's a muscle up? Is that a pull up? It's like a version of a pull up on the bar where you literally pull yourself up and you're all and you're straight up on the bar, come back down, and then pull yourself back up again. Right. Um, and then probably for me, I want to also master muscle up on the gymnastic rings. Cause I, there was like in March this year, I did a whole month of just strictly gymnastic rings training. Mm. And that was like a big, um, like strength boost for me, flexibility, endurance, all in one. Mm. And you learn, you learn about true strength on the gymnastic rings. You see it in the Olympics, don't you? Yeah, that's what true strength is. If you think you're strong, get on some gymnastic rings and try and hold yourself up, try and do like a skin the cat where you try and flip around. 
and try and hold yourself up. That's what true strength is. So um, big up to gymnasts, man. They're, they're, they're real super soldiers. It's, it's crazy because when I look at gymnastics, um, like, like I said, in the Olympics and yeah. things like that, they just look like their arms are just, just popping. Like they're, It looks like they're just always tensing, but they're, they're not. It's just Animals. the way they're just... It's just insane. Animals. Absolutely insane. All right, well, Jeff, thank you for coming on the show today. Uh, it's been a pleasure well, speaking to you, speaking about your journey, and I do wish you all the best in the future. Hopefully, I want to see that YouTube channel, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Maybe you start a little thing, maybe it blows up, and maybe you get a little spot on GMTV or something in the morning, I don't know, <laughs> new Mr. Motivator or something. You never know. You never know. We've got to speak these things into fruition, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speak <laughs> you know? Think positive. You never know what's going to come of it. But yeah, exactly. I mean, even just for yourself, for your own mental well-being and for your physical strength, your confidence, as you mentioned about your self-esteem, and just feeling better within yourself and feeling healthier as well. So, mm. you know, I wish you all the best continuing in the journey, okay? Yeah, appreciate you. You. Man, obviously you keep doing what you're doing, man. Big up to you on this, you know, bringing this awareness, especially for our people them as well. So, Mm. You keep leading the light, you know. Obviously, you know you're my brother, so mm. man rates what you're doing. Big love, man. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so to all that's been watching, this has been Melanin Melanin Mindset. Good morning, good afternoon, or good night. Peace. <laughs>